Hey everybody, let's talk about the truest deep dive of them all, the descent into Naboo's planet core, where fantastic beasts and adventure await. Cue the intro. Now first I have to clear something up about the planet Naboo. Basnas tells the Jedi to go through what he calls the planet core. Of course, however, that isn't scientifically possible in the literal sense as the interior core of such a large planet would definitely be such high pressure that it would destroy anything there, and likely entirely molten magma or metal. Not a great place to drive through. With that said, it's safe to interpret this as a near misnomer. The planet core referred to by Bas Nas appears to be the colloquial Gungan name for a network of deep sea waterways and trenches. This checks out with Bas Nas saying that it's the fastest way. It's not the fastest in the sense that you're going directly through the actual molten planet core itself, but rather that by traveling so deep in the ocean, you're reducing the overall circumference of the planet for your journey to the other side. If science explanations for Star Wars phenomena are of any interest to anyone, please leave a comment below letting me know. It may become a spin-off series. Anyway, now back to the movie. There's a second Lisa up. Going through the planet core? That's bombing. Um, any help here would be hot. <laughs> As mentioned in my video on Jar Jar's psychology, this is a moment where the Gungan resorts to fawning. He can't free himself from danger, so he actively tries to help the most friendly higher authority he can find, Qui-Gon, with the hope that the favor will be returned to him. Master, we're short on time. There goes Obi-Wan again with his hot-headed ignorance. Some people may say this sort of thing's out of character for him, or that these moments were only added to fulfill Ben's line from The Empire Strikes Back. Much anger in him. Like his father. Was I any different when you taught me? But the strongest case for Obi-Wan's rash attitude in The Phantom Menace is his role as the audience stand-in. Obi-Wan is our eyes on the world of Star Wars, seeing Qui-Gon as a wise mentor, Jar Jar as a silly fool, and the Gungans overall as strange and uncivilized. Obi-Wan begins with the brash mentality of the audience, judging the universe and its inhabitants as we do. This is the heart of what makes Obi-Wan such a fan favorite. He starts from the perspective of your standard viewer, becoming a wise Jedi master and mentor over time. If Obi-Wan can grow so much throughout his life, why can't we? He's an inspiration to us all for precisely that reason. But the story must continue. Young Obi-Wan needs someone to push him along at the beginning, so Qui-Gon acts as the reliable paragon. We need a navigator to get us through the planet's core. This Gungan may be of help. What is to become of Jar Jar Binks here? He seemed to be punished. There's that abuse of Jar Jar again. The Gungans really go hard, a unique mix of high technology, developed culture, and barbaric remnants of the past, as all societies are in one way or another. I saved his life. He owes me what you call a life debt. Your gods demand that his life belongs to me now. Binks! You, sir, have no life play with this and his? Uh-huh. Be gone with him. Interesting to note here that Qui-Gon has to use a Jedi mind trick when making an argument based on the Gungan's belief system. It's as though Bas Nas doesn't actually believe in the Gungan's own religion when it contradicts his personal authority. How very convenient. Count me out of this one. Better dead here than dead in the core. Ye gods! What's Amisa saying? The bongo dives into the unknown depths of this alien world as majestic music swells once again, with just a touch of tension as the camera shows us how small and vulnerable our troop of heroes truly is. We then get another small glimpse at Obi-Wan's personal growth. After seeing the Gungan city in all of its grandeur, Obi-Wan is finally compelled to ask Jar Jar a personal question for the first time. Why were you banished, Jar Jar? It's a long old tale, but uh, a small part of it would be mis uh, uh, clumsy. Your 
banish because you are clumsy. Ah, uh, you're so might be saying that. This interaction furthers Obi-Wan's understanding of and sympathy toward Jar Jar's situation, and he takes the audience along with him. Before, Jar Jar was a random clumsy fool, but now we find out that Jar Jar is more or less the victim of a brutally strict culture. But that's enough character development for now, and it's time to rack up the tension again. The camera suddenly teleports out into the deep, giving us another ominous shot of the Jedi's small craft this time being chased by a clearly ferocious predator. Misa cause maybe one or two wee little bit accidentes, huh? You'd say, boom the gasser, then crash into Buss's head liver, then vanish. Jar Jar panics, as expected, while the Jedi remain calm. The audience is expectedly somewhere between the two extremes, but nevertheless it shows us the scale of the threat as well as the Jedi's calm under extreme pressure. This scene with the chase primarily serves as a demonstration of the extreme lengths to which Jedi training extends. That these two are so comfortable in such a dangerous situation, says Volumes. Aside from being endlessly quotable, this line actually gives us a lot of insight into the Jedi philosophy. When Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan are calm as Jar Jar panics, you can't help but wonder why. Then they're saved, but only by the luck of an even greater threat. Still, through all of this, Qui-Gon remains perfectly calm in the way only a Jedi could. And then we get the explanation in one simple sentence. There's always a bigger fish. In other words, don't fight nature or worry about it. This corresponds closely with the ancient Chinese principle of Wu Wei in Taoism, loosely translated as effortless action or action through non-action. This principle, one of the many Taoist ideals held by the Jedi Order, relies on the assumption that nothing is stronger than nature. Taoist masters connect with the will of nature via the Tao. Jedi masters connect with the will of nature via the Force. Jar Jar was worried because he only saw the immediate threat. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan remained calm because the situation had not yet gotten out of hand for them, and they waited for nature to act before they intervened. Were no bigger fish to arrive at that moment, the Jedi would likely have used their lightsabers, breathing apparatus, and the Force to get out of the situation and save themselves, but they didn't jump to action immediately. Were they to jump into panicked action right away like Jar Jar, it's possible their ship could have been inadvertently destroyed by the lightsabers. They could have accidentally scared away the bigger fish. Or they could have mistakenly used the force in some way that actually made the situation worse. The Jedi principles, along with Wu Wei, especially for Qui-Gon, are about adapting to the situation as it evolves and working with nature rather than trying to force your own will upon it. This contrasts with the previous video where I pointed out that the prequel Jedi are purposely designed to show how jumping to action too soon can cause problems. These two scenes aren't contradictory. They show the two aspects of prequel Jedi. On the one hand, they have a great philosophy that often works out well for them and guides them. But on the other hand, they often abandon their own philosophy, causing new problems. You can assume that Qui-Gon did not expect to face a gas attack, fight droids, get run over in a swamp, discover an underwater civilization, and get attacked by a giant monster. It's unlikely that those were in his plan as he went on this trade dispute mission. But no one person can understand all of nature and the events around them beyond their control. All one can do is show restraint, adapt, act with nature as events unfold, and act for oneself only when absolutely necessary to prevent disaster. Even Jar Jar is calmed by this success, but while the Jedi plow forward confident in their ability to adapt to the world around them, Jar Jar proposes a change in course that would lead them back into further danger. Music think we going back now. But Jar Jar's remark on giving up and actively trying to change course is swiftly undercut by a powerful visual, showing the ultimate power of nature. The Jedi know they can't fight it. They can only keep moving forward and adapt as things come. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you found this deep dive interesting. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below with your thoughts on today's topic. And as always, think critically, be creative, and have a great day.